Hey everyone, welcome to the Contour Maintainer track. Um, today we have all the Contour Maintainers here um, doing a, a presentation on Contour. Uh, so let's just go around the room first and introduce ourselves. Um, I'm Alex Xu, I'm a product manager at VMware in the Cloud Native Business Unit. Um, I'll hand it off to Nick. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Nick Young. I am a, the technical lead on Contour and I'm a staff engineer at VMware in the same business unit as Alex. Uh, over to you, Steve K. Yeah, hi everyone, I'm Steve Chris. I'm an engineer at VMware and I'm a maintainer on Contour. And I'll pass it over to Steve Sloka. Hi everyone, uh, Steve Sloka. Uh, I've been working on Contour for a while. I also am uh, an engineer at VMware. Uh, off to you, Sanjay. Hey everyone, my name's Sanjay. Uh, uh, member of uh, the, con the Contour Maintainer team and an engineer at VMware as well. All right. Um, yeah. Thanks, everyone. So I'll start with you know what is Contour. So Contour is a Kubernetes ingress controller. Um, if you have no experience with ingress, this is basically a way to bring external traffic into your Kubernetes cluster. Um, so ingress is it's part of the Kubernetes API, but in order to, to use Ingress, to leverage Ingress, you need an Ingress controller, um, which is a piece of software that you'd have to install into your cluster and it controls how traffic you know hits your cluster from the outside and how it gets routed to different services with. Um, so Contour works by packaging and deploying Envoy, which is another open source project, a really popular one. Um, and that functions as a reverse proxy and the layer seven load balancer deployed within your Kubernetes cluster. Um, so basically any, you know, Contour is, is a control plane for Envoy and Envoy is the reverse proxy which exposes any HTTP or HTTPS routes from the outside to your upstream services within the cluster. Um, Project Contour supports TLS termination um, pass through. We have various load balancing options for um, you know, controlling this traffic or bouncing this traffic between your different backends as you scale up and down. We can take the request header um, and, and do some basic manipulation and then use that as the input for determining, you know, exactly which backend to send the traffic to. Um, we support authenticated requests, uh, unauthenticated requests, where you can add rate limiting to your requests. Um, there's also sticky sessions, or we call it session affinity, uh, and much, much more. And there's lots of telemetry and tracing capabilities on top. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a basic overview of the project. Um, you know, since inception, started in Heptio in 2017. Um, it was donated to CNCF at incubation level. Uh, if you don't know what that is, basically every project in CNCF goes through several stages, right? They go from sandbox to incubation to donation and this this stage that you're at is basically an indication of the maturity level of the project um, from a, a community health perspective right in terms of user adoption in terms of external contributions and um, usage or deployments in the wild right production deployments of contour so we've done a couple of these talks before um, and i just want to cover you know, what we've been doing since the last talk about a couple of months ago. Um, so a couple of highlights here. The first one is that uh, we're still doing really, really well in terms of supporting Gateway API. Um, and Gateway API is an upstream project from SIG network. That's, you know, about doing service networking in Kubernetes. Um, and Contour is probably the furthest along in terms of adopting Gateway API and also helping design some of the, uh, the upstream API. Um, our maintainer here, Nick Yellen, is actually a maintainer of the Gateway API project itself as well. Um, so right now, you know, we're just trying to bring some of the features in Gateway API up to parity with what we already have in Contour today. Um, and I think they just had a big release in the V1 Alpha 2, and that's the version we're going to be using in the upcoming Contour release as well. Uh, the second highlight is we're exploring a new model where Contour is basically managing or it's provisioning and it's managing the fleet of envoys in your Kubernetes cluster. Uh, and this configuration is specified on the new configuration CRD. And a lot of the design here was really motivated by, you know, our 
support for Gateway API and, and thinking about how might a cluster operator want to deploy this, right? And how an envoys should be configured and how statuses and errors should be reflected. Um, and we'll be, we'll be going over those in, in detail in later slides. Um, the last thing I want to mention is that Contour is moving to a quarterly release from the monthly release that we have today. Um, and this is supposed to allow us to align better with the upstream Envoy releases as well as Kubernetes, Kubernetes releases. Um, there's a lot of, you know, if you head over to the Contour or GitHub, there are a lot of issues and, and discussions happening on, on why that is and you know what this allows us to do in terms of just move, removing some of the overhead with release engineering and really focus on feature delivery. Um, also, it allows us to support multiple releases, so three releases at a time instead of just the latest release. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so I'll go over briefly what Project Contour um, is, is really doing when you deploy it into your Kubernetes cluster. Um, so you have traffic coming from the external world, right? It hits your external load balancer and then hits your Envoy. And this external load balancer could be any number of options depending on how your Kubernetes cluster is deployed. Um, so if it's deployed on public cloud or bare metal or on some kind of a managed service, right? This load balancer is brought up differently. So if we look at, you know, this deployment in, in the context of public cloud, the Contour is basically invoking the cloud APIs to instantiate a cloud load balancer, right? And traffic hits your, your Envoy proxy, which is sitting at the edge of your Kubernetes cluster. And then traffic gets routed to the different applications that you have in your cluster, right? So we have a, a web application and then we have a blog application. And typically this routing behavior is defined using ingress YAMLs, right? And so you specify a path and how that maps to a different, to, to, a, to a service in your cluster. Um, so you can use plain ingress YAMLs. You can also use the CRD that we have here called HTTP proxy. Um, it's just a, a, a much more prescriptive way of defining the, the routing behavior. Um, and, and Gateway API has another option called HTTP route, which we're implementing today. Um, <clears throat> So this is basically what the data path looks like, going to external load balancer, going to Envoy, and then it goes to your application. And you can see that Contour is sitting here. Um, so that's on the side, talking to Envoy, almost like a sidecar. Uh, we know that there's a Kubernetes API server in your cluster somewhere. Um, and so what Contour is doing is basically it's watching the Kubernetes API server. It's pulsing the API server for changes to any relevant resources that Envoy might be interested in, right? So um, changes to your applications, to your services and their endpoints, um, changes to, to ingress YAMLs, ingress resources or HTTP proxy resources. And it's reflecting all these changes back to Envoy um, instantaneously and dynamically. This is one of the, the value propositions of building on Envoy is that it allows itself to be configured dynamically. And, and so, you know, in the absence of Contour, basically uh, Envoy cannot directly consume Kubernetes API. So Contour is acting as that translation layer and reflecting these changes to Envoy so it can reconfigure itself. Um, and, and so this is basically, you know, hopefully this gives a good, good overview of what happens when you deploy Contour into your, uh, your cluster. And with that, I'll hand it over to Steve. Uh, hey, everyone. Um, or Sanjay, Sanjay. sorry. Uh, wanted to talk about, as just touch on again, what Alex mentioned about what's new in Contour. Um, so we've been on hard work working on uh, Gateway API implementation. Um, as Alex mentioned, we are pretty far along and should be one of the most advanced um, implementations of the API. Um, uh, the Gateway APIs have um, recently released uh, the V1 Alpha 2 version of the API, and we're uh, working on implementing that. That should be coming up in the next next uh, release or so of Contour. Um, currently, Contour um, supports the V1 Alpha 1 um, uh, release, and Steve um, K will be uh, demoing that in, the, in a few minutes. Um, um, we're also uh, moving to quarter, quarterly releases. We announced it recently in the um, uh, community call that we have 
and we've outlined how we're going to um, uh, uh, perform this support and uh, how we're going to uh, support Contour in a, with an increased window. Um, and uh, uh, we have a new config CRD that's going to um, allow us to uh, more dynamically respond to configuration changes and and uh, give more feedback to users about contour configuration and hopefully um, make contour a bit more operational and mature. Uh, as that com also combined with gateway API work and um, uh, moving towards a, a, a version of contour where we will uh, manage our deployment of Envoy because currently you uh, actually deploy Envoy as a separate uh, deployment or daemon set from your Contour deployment. Um, in the future, we are hoping to have Contour uh, manage Envoy itself and um, um, we can see some uh, advantages uh, in terms of uh, interoperability with Gateway API and dynamic changes and, and being able to uh, also continually be more, more uh, operationally uh, mature. Uh, next, next slide, please. So talking a little bit more in detail about Gateway API. Um, Gateway API is a, a, pro a project in the SIG network um, community um, aimed at uh, kind of transforming how Ingress is represented in Kubernetes, uh, formerly known as Ingress v2 or, or service APIs. Um, now known as gateway APIs, because the concept of a gateway, if you um, uh, look into some of the, the documentation on the, on the uh, site that's linked here, uh, that's kind of an important idea. And it, it, it's represented in a collection of resources that um, uh, can be targeted at different um, personas in, a, in an operational sense and a deployment of applications. So you may have your infrastructure provider your cluster operator and application developers that manage different resources at different levels of API. Um, so we introduced support for Gateway API first in Contour uh, version 1.13. Um, and as I mentioned before, we're currently implemented uh, uh, V1 alpha one of the API, but uh, there's big changes that have come in V1 alpha two of the Gateway API. So we will uh, uh, be implementing those soon. And we should be able to use those shortly. So uh, for a quick demo of Gateway API and Contour, here we go uh, with Steve, Steve Chris. All right, thanks Sanjay. So I'm just gonna switch over to uh, VS Code window here. So um, I have a kind cluster deployed here on my uh, local laptop. Uh, it's got Contour installed in it. And so I'm gonna do a quick walkthrough of, of how to get up and running with Gateway API uh, and Contour. So the first thing we need to do is, is tell Contour through its uh, config map uh, that it should listen, uh, watch for a gateway class and a gateway and, and tell it specifically which gateway class and gateway to watch for. And so the way that's done is by specifying a controller name here under the gateway stanza in the config map. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this file. Uh, okay, so we've updated our config map. Now we need to um, restart contour to pick up the changes. Um, this is sort of alludes to some of the changes we've talked about as far as using a CRD for config and, and making these things more, uh, uh, let's see, more dynamic, but for now we need to restart the deployment. So restart contour and just wait for it to be up. Okay, so we got a new pod coming up, so I'll move on and that should be up and running by the time we uh, get to the next step. So the next thing we need to do is create a gateway class uh, that has a controller uh, string matching this, this value that we put in the config file. Um, and so here I have a file that's defining a gateway class. Um, this is in the gateway API group. Um, and as Sanjay and others have mentioned, we're currently using v1 alpha one, but we'll be moving to v1 alpha two shortly. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this file. And so now we have a gateway class. I can list the gateway classes here and uh, we can also describe it. And so at the bottom here, you can see in the status that uh, we've got a condition added to the gateway class that says it's valid and it's been admitted uh, with the status of true. And so this means Contour has picked it up and seen that it should process it. 
So the next thing we need to do then is define a gateway uh, for that gateway class. So this is a, this file contains a gateway spec. Um, we can see that it uses the gateway class that I showed in the previous file. And this is a, just a very simple gateway that has a single uh, listener uh, listening on port 80 for HTTP. And uh, also it can select any HTTP route uh, across all namespaces. Um, so there's, there's a bunch of uh, sort of configurability here as far as what kind of routes uh, each gateway should match, what listeners it should have, and which namespaces it should connect to. Um, but for the purposes of this demo, we'll just st stick with a uh, basic configuration here. So I'll apply this file as well. Uh, we've got a gateway. Um, this one was created in the project contour namespace. So we can uh, take a quick look at the gateways in that namespace. And you can see here that we've uh, also got a, a uh, condition here indicating that this gateway is is ready. Uh, it's valid, and so this means Contour has picked it up and now is ready to uh, pick up some routes for it. So uh, just before I define the routes, um, in the default namespace here, I've got a couple of uh, just sample workloads, S1 and S2, that we'll be routing some traffic to. So let's take a look at the route that we have. So um, this is an HTTP route, again, in the Gateway API uh, API group. And this one will uh, pick up traffic that's directed at local.projectcontour.io. And so to start, I'm going to have a, just a simple rule that says uh, any request uh, with a prefix of slash, meaning uh, match any request, should be forwarded to S1. So I'll go ahead and apply this, this file. OK, we've got a route. So now if I uh, just curl local.projectcontour.io, we get a response from echo server one, uh, which was that first service. And uh, regardless of the path I put here, we get routed to S1. So um, we know we have two services in here. So let's, let's actually um, set up a couple of rules to route to the different services. So I'll change this first rule to say that if there's a prefix on the path of S1, we should route to service S1. And I'll uncomment this section here. And this says that uh, if I have a, a request with a prefix of S2, we should route to S2. So I'll reapply this route. And so now if we route to S1, we still get uh, echo server one. If we use uh, path of S2, uh, looks like that didn't actually go through. So- I think you forgot to save. Ah, thanks Nick. <laughs> Good call. Okay, so let's try that one more time. So we go to S1, hits echo server one, go to S2, it hits echo server two. Um, and then we can do a few more complex things with the, uh, the matching rules here. So let's, instead of using this one, let's use this one down here. Um, so in this case, let's say that we, we only wanna route traffic to service S2 if uh, the request has a prefix of S2 and the request also has uh, this header uh, specified in the request. Um, and so this, this uh, configuration allows you to do that. So I'm gonna save this file again and reapply it. And so now if we, uh, if we add that header to the request, uh, so I'm specifying the header that was defined as a match in that, uh, we'll get traffic routed to echo server two. But if I take that header out, uh, we don't get routed anywhere. Um, and so this is a, a simple way to add additional conditions to your, your routing. Now you might have a, an alternate scenario where you actually want to say, I want any traffic that has the S2 prefix to be routed to S2, but, uh, or I want any traffic that has this header uh, to be routed to S2. And so the way you do that is to um, create a separate match within your, your route rule. Um, and this treats them as it's kind of as logical ors rather than logical ands. So I'll reapply this route one more time. And now if we do, if we simply curl the path without the header, uh, we get routed to echo server two. And then if I change this to just foo, actually let me. So if I add back the header um, and change the, uh, the path prefix to something other than S2, we can see that we still get routed to echo server two. So uh, that shows you a couple of different ways that you can set up your routing rules and, and get traffic to different backends. Um, so hopefully that gives you a good sense of uh, kind of the basics of using gateway API with Contour. Um, there's a lot more to dig into into the API here and certain things will definitely be changing with V1 Alpha 2, uh, but we plan to 
uh, stay on top of the changes and, and continue to build out our support here. So with that, I'll go back to the slides. And I'll turn it over to Nick. Hi, everyone. Um, OK, uh, my job today is to talk a little bit about the quarterly releases. Um, so yeah, up till now, Contour has been releasing monthly using like a release train model, where uh, at around about the end of the month, the release train pulls out of the station, and everything that is merged into the uh, repo is what is in <laughs> what ends up in the release. Um, as of our October release, we're going to be moving to quarterly uh, releases, though. So it's still going to be pretty much a release train model. Um, you know, whatever is ready um, at about the time we're due to release will be what gets cut. But given that we're going to have three months um, instead of one month, we're hoping that we should be able to do a bit better planning and be able to tell you more about what's going to be in the release before the release actually comes out. Uh, and to be able to plan a little bit more ahead and say that will make it into release X. Um, the other thing that we're that's really important um, is that we're going to be moving to supporting three contra releases. Now, there's a little there's some fiddly bits there in the slide, but I just wanted to talk briefly about the reason why we're doing this. And the reason why we're doing this is, you know, contra is getting to be more mature. We're not making as big changes every time. Um, we don't have like a huge number of features left to, to hit feature parity with a lot of the other ingress controllers on the market. Um, and so I think we're we're hoping here to make the life of the person of the user of Contour easier, that you don't have to update every month to get the latest security fixes or to get the latest fixes and, and patches and stuff like that. That shouldn't be, you shouldn't need to be updating as often as we have been. Uh, previously in the part, uh, previously Contour has been you know, updating very frequently because we've been changing things very frequently. But as we sort of start to round out some of those things and need to work on bigger features that are taking a longer time to release, it's starting mm -hmm. to mean that we end up with a much smaller uh, set of features in each release. And so we're having to make your life easier by, as I said, by lengthening these releases and making the releases a bit more meaty. Um, so how are we going to move to uh, to supporting three releases? Well, he, this is this is the plan. Um, the we're going to for uh, one twenty, which is currently scheduled for October. All these dates here I've got are very tentative dates. Obviously, we haven't done quarterly releases before, so. This is the, the rough plan as of today, um, but this may change obviously as we as we have a crack at this and find that things are easier or harder than we intend them to be. So for for one twenty, which is scheduled for October, um, the only release that will be supported is one twenty. That's no change to today, only one version. However, when one twenty one comes out, which is three months from then, is sort of end of January twenty twenty two, we will support one twenty and one twenty one, and the and then as we go to uh, 122 which is about the end of april then it'll be 120 121 122 and then once we get to uh, 123 which is july 22 that's when we'll drop support for 120 so then we'll support 121 122 123 uh, what does support mean um support means in this case that uh critical uh, fixes like security fixes or other bug fixes will be backported to multiple releases so if, there's a, if someone finds a severe bug in some feature that we built, then we will backport uh, that fix to all of the feature, all of the releases that have that feature available. But we're not going to be doing our feature backporting. Um, so we're not going to backport if we add you know, something, some new uh, Nifty feature X. We're not going to backport that to our previous features. It's only going to be fixes. Um, that's just to make sure that uh, we're not spending all our time just doing backporting and not actually getting to do any uh, feature things. So yeah, so what that means at the end of the day is that any particular version, once we get to sort of 122, uh, any version will get nine months of security and other urgent feature fixes. Um, so we're hoping that that should be much better than you. Um, obviously, nine months is a slightly weird cadence. Um, you know, Kubernetes, specific, Kubernetes has specifically moved away from doing that by uh, changing their one to a year. Um, but we're hoping that this will be good enough, um, and we will see how we go once we've once we've run this sort of three uh, quarterly release support for a while and see how much effort it is, how much value everybody's getting out of it. So yeah, uh, very interested to hear what everyone thinks about this. Um, yeah, and uh, hopefully it should be more useful for you. Uh, now, I can't remember who's, who's up next. Um, Steve, Steve S, thanks Steve K. Uh, Steve S, over to you for the config CID discussion. Well, thanks Nick, yeah. So uh, we're looking at moving to, uh, to Contra's 
config into a, uh, a CRD. So right now, Steve, if you want to pop down a couple of clicks. Yeah, right now we, we store configuration options um, in a config map. So uh, there's a, a config map you edit. You saw Steve do that in the demo where you had to edit that config map. Um, they had to restart Contour for Contour to pick that up. Uh, that's where things live today. Um, and, and there's also command flags that you can pass. So in the you know Contour serve, uh, in the in the Contour um, pod, there's different commands you can pass to that or flags that overlap as well with the config map. So right now we've got this sort of mishmash of where the config map overrides the environment variables, which get overridden by the, the command line flags, um, and, and we're sort of in a, in a, in a weird spot. So uh, our goal here is to help make this simpler um, and, and solve some problems here. So I think there's four different problems in this slide, and I shouldn't have put transitions in here. Uh, but uh, so right now, the operator that we have, the contour operator, has to translate from a CRD into the config map. So, um, and the CRD that the operator is managing is different from what contour manages. So the goal here is to centralize this and have this live as one, uh, one type. So one configuration, you know, go struct in a sense. Um, we didn't have any way to surface errors. Uh, so other than logs and contour. So if you did something wrong, you configure something wrong, contour would crash loop. And you'd have to go tail the logs and see what was wrong. Um, we can also implement some simple CRD validation. So if a field should be, you know, a number and you put a string in there, we can throw that out before you try to apply that CRD to the to the to the cluster. Um, and then eventually, we'd like to have uh, dynamic restarts of contour. So if you make a config change, it'll just contour will pick that up and just restart itself automatically. All right, next slide, Steve. Cool. So the implementation kind of looks like this. Um, it's like there was something on the left there, but maybe not. Um, so the, the, the configuration file has, um, has been simplified. So we, we've taken all those little bits and put them together. Um, actually, there may be some transitions here as well. So if you click, click. Yeah, so all the fields now are camel case. So we had a mix of camel case um, and hyphenated values. Um, all the non-required startup command flags are now in this file. So again, you can have a simple file that's portable across deployments. Um, and then we've grouped things together. So things that were dealt, dealing with the XDS server, they're all put together. Things that are debug related things or health or metrics. Again, they have a, a proper grouping now, which before we didn't have as well. Uh, there's a design doc you can check out for more information on this down there at the bottom. Uh, it's in our design directory in the contour repo. And the next section here is gonna talk about uh, manage Envoy, which is the next part of this. So um, Contra is going to moving moving to manage Envoy itself. So Envoy is, is the critical data path component that it has to go with Contour. Contour is the configuration server for Envoy. So the goal here is to have Contour read this spec that we just wrote. Um, and then in that new configuration CRD, there's a new managed option under Envoy. And this will tell Contour, hey, I'm going to manage Envoy. And then there's the details of how that Envoy uh, daemon set of deployment should look or work in your cluster. Um, that'll define how it's published to the outside of the cluster, uh, what nodes to put this on, and, and, and various things. This is obviously a very simplified uh, window of this, uh, but essentially you'll just deploy Contour, and then Contour will then manage the Envoy fleet for you. Uh, when you upgrade Contour and change this configuration, then Contour will manage rolling out that Envoy fleet uh, for you. Uh, in the future, looking with the operator, we will have a, a spec that the operator will read to help you manage Contour. So um, everything will work kind of as it is today, uh, but we're looking, hoping that this layered approach will help you uh, manage your environment in the, in the best way that, that fits, your, fits your world. Uh, so again, all these, all these design docs are out in our repo under the design folder. Uh, please check them out and give us some feedback. So I think, Nick, you are next with the roadmap. Thanks very much, Steve. Um, yeah, so, I mean, if I would summarize this roadmap in a very short number of words, uh, it would be, yeah, the main thing we're going to do is do what we just talked about. Um, so, but... I mean, to just run down, like, you know, we're going to finish up the release cadence and support window change. We're going to migrate the config to the CID. Um, this is, the I think, one of the things that, you know, Steve has done a great job of designing, but maybe you missed a little bit there, was that we, um, we're not going to, we're going to make sure we, we, this is going to be a nice, slow process. Everybody's going to have plenty of chances to move across. Um, you know, we're not going to drop this on you and then, you know, you're going to have to change this quickly. There's going to be plenty of time for you to move across to this safely. Um, and the same goes for managed envoy. Like we're, we're going to bring this stuff on board, let everybody have a chance to try it out before before you know before we do anything about mandating. Um, the gateway API support is um, you know a lot of these changes are to support being able to uh, implement gateway API in the best way we can imagine. Um, and as gateway API comes on, uh, moves through its versions, we're going to try and get our best to keep up. Now, 
you know, I think Alex mentioned earlier, I'm also a maintainer on the Gateway API project. One of the things we're trying to do with the current release of uh, V1 Alpha 2 is to make sure that all of the breaking changes that we need to make are in V1 Alpha 2. So as the Gateway API moves forward, um, implementers of the API like us, like a Contour, won't have to make as bigger changes in order to support it. So hopefully as Gateway API moves to beta uh, and, then, and then to GA, there's gonna be minimal changes that we're gonna to need to make to our Gateway API process and code. That's the plan. Um, so that's sort of the, the Gateway API is really like the future of ingress in Kubernetes. Um, it's gonna be the way to describe things in a more complicated, anything more complicated than sort of the really basic ingress use cases that are handled already by the base ingress object, that's gonna be done, that's gonna be pushed towards a gateway API. Um, I think that nobody really thinks that the place that ingress has ended up uh, with uh, yeah, lots of annotations is the best place. Um, and the gateway API is sort of a very much a response to that and, and a response to being able to make this stuff more exposed and declarative and understandable. And so that's one of the reasons, that's the reason why Contra is very involved and very, um, and very bullish about the prospect of the gateway API. Um, so the last couple of things we're gonna um, we're gonna look at, be looking forward to is um, where you know Contra's been around for quite a few years now. Um, the state of the art uh, for XDS control planes has moved on, um, and so some of our uh, XDS code is getting a bit long in the tooth. And there's probably there's a bunch of optimizations we can do there. So we've got sort of a longer running stream um, that has kicked off, but. You uh, will. We're hoping we'll deliver some value um, over the next little while to modernize our XDS code to enable some of the more advanced ways in which XDS code works. So hopefully, it should mean that Contour should be more efficient talking on the wire to Envoy uh, and vice versa. Um, and lastly, um, we're aiming to push for CNCF graduation in 2022. Um, you, the, we've done a lot of the sort of basic background work that we've got to do for that, um, and a lot. But a lot of what's required is. Um, you know, community interaction. So you, know, we're looking for contributors. We, you know, we love to have new people come and contribute. Um, we've got a bunch of stuff labeled as good first issue and help wanted. Um, we have a tech docs working group. So if you don't, you know, if you're not a, a coder, but you want to contribute to Contour, there are definitely ways to do that. And we would really love to welcome you into our community. Um, you know, with that said as well, like, yeah, we're always looking for more maintainers. And so if you have bandwidth to, uh, you know, really throw yourself into Contour and would like to be a maintainer, then, you know, talk to us um, you know, and we can direct you to places in which you can contribute so you can start climbing that contribution ladder. That's one of the requirements for CNCF graduation is that we need to have a more diverse uh, maintainer pool across every axis. Uh, and you know, I, for one, would really like to see you know, more, more people be maintainers and for us to have a better diversity you know, you know, in thinking, in companies, in, you know, in who people are, uh, so that we can build a better product that serves more people more easily. Um, obviously, our public roadmap that's linked down the bottom, um, which is in our community repo, is the canonical place to talk about the sort of more lower level uh, roadmap features. And so, um, you know, that's the place to go to, to to find out sort of all the detail on that. I think uh, with that, uh, I'll uh, flip over to Alex for, uh, yeah, to finish up. Yeah, but... Thanks, Nick. Um... So this is, you know, um, th thanks for sticking with us. You've made it to the last slide. This is the state of the world of the Contour community. Um, so, you know, some telemetry here. We have six maintainers. Um, but again, like Nick said, we would love for more people to join us. It, you don't have to join as a maintainer, right? There are other ways to contribute. Um, just, you know, coming to these talks and coming to our community meetings um, are, are really, you know, really beneficial to all of us. Um, so, you know, we have these community meetings. Um, so feel free to, to drop by and you can ask any questions or just, you know, watch, um, or, you know, watch us discuss releases and discuss PRs, uh, talk about the roadmap, things like that. All the community meetings are recorded so you can watch these on YouTube. Um, I think we've also explored We've been exploring an idea of making the maintainer meetings public as well, probably through a, a Zoom webinar of some kind. Also, anyone can come and you know, attend and, and follow us, but it allows us to stick to our agenda. Um, so, yeah, I want, I want to thank everyone who has attended in the past, um, giving us really great feedback and all the things that you've been 
you know, hearing us discuss just now, like the managed Envoy, uh, the Gateway API support that we're doing, you know, all these things are still in flight. So definitely appreciate anyone coming and share your perspective. Um, so that's it for me. Um, that's it from all of us. I want to thank you for attending this talk. Um, and then we also have a couple of office hours during this KubeCon that you can drop by and you know ask any questions you like, deep dive any issue or any future request. Um, so that's it. Thank you. <laughs>